What does it mean practically to keep the Sabbath day holy? It seems like it's often a matter of personal conscience how people put this commandment into practice. Um, I, th I think it is a matter of personal conscience and, uh, and um, by and large probably should be a matter of personal conscience, but that doesn't mean that it has no meaning and no biblical guidelines. Um, the, the big question for the Sabbath is whether or not in the New Testament God uh, sees there being a commandment uh, to keep the Sabbath day holy in the same way it was commanded in the Old Testament. I mean, this was a capital offense in the Old Testament. Be killed for carrying sticks on the Old Testament. Uh, on the Sabbath day. Um, I'm going to ignore the issue right now of Sunday versus Saturday and just assume that's not the question at all, that the Christian Sabbath, the Christian seventh is Sunday, is the Lord's day, the resurrection day of Jesus. And I agree with that. I, I think those who do seventh day things are unmisunderstanding. That uh, the Lord's day, the day Jesus rose from the dead is the day that the early church marked the holy day of the week. Now the question then becomes, um, what's God's will for the resurrection day, Sunday, in, as it's revealed in the New Testament? And Romans 14 is significant for me because it appears in Romans 14 that there was a disagreement in the church one celebrates one day and one counts all days alike. Now, it doesn't say explicitly that was a Sabbath issue. could have been some other kind of holiday issue. But it does say one sets aside one day for the Lord and one considers all days alike. I remember talking with this about an Old Testament scholar, and it doesn't say, he said, it doesn't say it views all days alike secular, but all, maybe all days alike holy. I said, right. I'm, I suspect that is what it means. In other words, every day is holy to the Lord for some people in Romans 14, and others said, yes, but this one is special. So it appears that there was disagreement. And Paul's way of handling the disagreement was not to side with either one. That's what's so significant, is, is that he said, uh, one man keeps it to the Lord, another is free to the Lord, and let both honor the Lord. Now, that's very significant because I think the people that give no thought to the Lord's day and don't do anything to make it special are probably not making those decisions to the Lord. That's just a question. I, by and large, they seem careless, not thoughtful about what they're doing. And they default to professional sports and TV and movies. And, and, and you look at this and say, is this different from Saturday? <laughs> uh, is there anything special about this? And, uh, and there are a lot of Christians who say, no, there's nothing special about it. Now, I, I think that the principle uh, in the New Testament is that God ordains that one day in seven be restful. I think that's a a creation ordinance for our good, for our health. Um, and so one of the things we should do is do things on the Lord's day that refresh us for his service, both intellectually, spiritually, and physically. So if you sit at your desk all week, probably you should walk on Sunday, <laughs> ride a bike, or, you know, and if you, if you, work in the farm, breaking your back all week, which is what they did in the Old Testament, then sit down and take a long nap on Sunday. Uh, so the rest piece, I think, is, is physiologically and from a creation order standpoint, wise. Use the word wisdom rather than any particular one way of doing it being mandated. Just take one day in seven, set it aside as the day when you are physically recharging. So we, we get a whole weekend off, so we tend to think, 
How does that relate to Saturday? Whereas the Bible says, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, and seventh day you rest. So the Bible doesn't have a five-day work week in mind. The Bible has a six-day work week in mind. And that's the way I think with myself is I'm working six days a week. And on, on Monday, which is the day I take off, I'm putting my feet up and not thinking in terms of, of work. But rather, I pray at the beginning of the day, Lord, whatever happens today, help me. To, may it be energizing for Tuesday. May it be energizing for the week that's coming. May it give me strength, give me energy. Now, the holy peace is the one that's being fa- focused on here. The holy peace, I think, would be worship. Whether it's Saturday night leading in or Sunday morning, set aside a day when a significant focus is on corporate worship. I think that's uh, implicit in the way the New Testament talks about the gathering of God's people. So holy in the sense of it's set aside for corporate worship. Secondly, I would think that you would want to try to restrain certain secular involvements in such a way that you say something special about this day. It's different from the other days because Christ is Lord and risen in a way that I want to speak about in a unique way today. And But I, I really don't want to lay down rules for what that would be. Um, I just, I give you some applications that we developed from our family. Um, we didn't do professional sports on Sunday. Not, my, none of my sons went to, went to ball games on Sunday. And, and I didn't draw the line that they couldn't go to somebody's house and watch it on television. And people think, oh, that's weird, you know, what kind of crazy line drawing is that? But I, I had my reasons, and I, I would tell the boys what those reasons were about being a part of that whole swirl of uh, non-God activity at the Metrodome. Uh, but that was one. We didn't go to movies on Sunday. Like, you know, kick back and everybody goes to you. Because mo- 99% of the movies are totally godless and secular, even when they're not evil. They're just bleh. They don't have anything to do with God. Um, and... I don't think I've ever been to a movie on Sunday in my life and don't ever intend to go to one. It's just part of, you know, who I am. Um, but I, I'm not, I, I do not snoop around at Bethlehem <laughs> to find out what my staff are doing or what others are doing. We just, we want very much to say, you need the rest one day a week and you need uh, to find a way to say to the Lord, I love you and I reverence you and I honor you in a, in a special way on this day.